Awesome stuff. All right, so chat box is flooded. Chase just crushed it. Josh, welcome to the summit, man. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join yeah, us. Yeah, thanks, man. Let's rock it. Of course. Um, so for people that are on here, let's say if they don't know you for some godly reason, if they are in e-commerce and don't know everything that you're doing to shake the industry, let's give them a quick intro to, to let them know what's up. Uh, sure. So um, I've been, I've been, I did the math and uh, I've been doing this whole internet stuff um, uh, for more than half of my life. That'll change next year. It'll be half my life. And then after that, we'll see what happens. But um, I got started at a really early age um, just because I wanted to figure out how to make money. Um, that's just it. I never wanted to be an entrepreneur. I didn't know anything about anything. Uh, I just was uh, wanted to help my family out, wanted to make some money, found out I could you know, make websites and people would pay me to make websites. Um, so, you know, I figured out how to make websites and then I figured out how to make software and then I figured out how to market and advertise. And so, um, what I'm most known for recently, so I've, I've built and sold multiple companies, um, prior to snow, but what I'm most known for today, um, is a brand I started, uh, close to five years, four or five years ago. Um, called snow and so it's on Instagram at snow websites try snow.com um, and it's it's an oral care meets beauty brand um, we we create all of our own products in-house uh, have never drop shipped or done any of that um, just from the ground up wanted to build a brand that was truly uh, disruptive to a very large industry a very competitive almost impossible industry to break into I was seeking that in my life, seeking difficulty, trying to pick something that I could stick to for a long period of time. And it happened to be that um, I was going through jaw surgery at the same time, became really close with my dentist, Martha Donis, my oral surgeon, and um, started to do the research and said, this is probably the last market you want to enter if you, um, you know, want to have any chance of success. And I said, that sounds about right. So um, that's what I decided to do. And, and along the way, um, I've been very fortunate to build an incredible team. Um, my team is everything. My customers are everything. We have uh, our products are amazing. We believe that they're the best. We're constantly updating and, and uh, making them better, listening to our customers. And uh, now we've got hundreds of thousands of customers all over the world. Um, continue to grow the brand, continue to launch new products. We've got about six products that are launching over the next six months that we're really excited about. Pretty much anything that you can walk down the oral care aisle um, and, and see we're um, reinventing those products one by one and introducing them to the world. So uh, they call us the apple of oral care. Um, we're just trying, we're figuring our way out too. I'm still a student. I'm still here learning. Of course, man. Um, and I think it's amazing. So to, to get you guys up to speed in layman's terms, Josh has innovated a, a market that was already filled with giants and is now outpacing brands such as Crest, Colgate on innovative products that, you know, they're definitely on the more expensive side of things. If people are selling like cheap uh, sub $50 products, um, Josh has figured out a way to really build this brand to, you know, substantial numbers. So Josh, from when you started Snow, to, to give people a little bit of, you know, relative insight, what would you say was the turning point that enabled, you know, your hockey stick level growth? Um... I mean, at its core, the focus was on creating truly differentiated products. Um, I, I think for me, it was, it was, I got to a point in my life where I didn't want to kind of half-ass anything. I really wanted to, to, to have something that I could run for 50 years and really have something that was, that would stand out in the marketplace. Um, I think that was, that's important. That didn't necessarily, that wasn't like the one thing that just hockey stick growth. It's, it's the base. Like if you great marketing and great advertising only goes so far, um, they're amplification vehicles for what you have already built. So if, you know, um, let's say for example, you're, you're, you're not a nice guy, you're an asshole and you have five of the biggest celebrities in the world amplify you like sooner or later, that's going to come to bite you in your butt because, um, you know, you're not a good person and like more people will see you. So if you, if you hop on stage, let's say, look, you're a horrible singer, you're going to headline Coachella. Um, probably not going to work. If you're a great singer and you're going to headline Coachella, you're probably going to explode after that. And everyone's going to want to follow you and buy your music and go to your concerts. So it's very important that what you're building 
and what you're working on is something that you can truly be proud of, that you can go to every room, every house, every family member, every friend, and put the brand on your hat, put the brand on your shirt, tattoo it on yourself. Is it something that you can stand by for a long period of time? It's, that's different from saying you have to be passionate about it. Um, it you know, at the end of the day, I'm not a dentist, I'm not a you know doctor, but um, I was passionate about the disruptive nature of our brand and the challenge of a deep-seated um, uh, market. And so for me, it was about the challenge is what I'm passionate about, about creating those products. So for us, Hockey Stick Growth was more about um, having phenomenal products that were differentiated, um, that stood out in the marketplace. And um, you know, you know you've done a good job at that if people try to copy. That's what's important to, to lock down your patents and your trademarks and stuff like that. You don't have to worry about that out the gate, but it's something that if you do start to pick up steam, uh, people don't copy losers, they copy winners. Um, and we've, we've done a pretty good job of shutting those people down. But um, I would say create something that is different, even if the product itself isn't different. I mean, look at the, the water I'm holding. It's, you know, it's in a blue, you know, cardboard bottle or whatever this is. Um, Plant-based carton, you know, does it taste any differently? No. But right away, people see a blue bottle in your hand. Like, what kind of water is that? Why are you drinking that? What's the mission behind it? So having a story around what you're creating, I think, is really important. And then... Um, you know, I'm not going to hide from the fact that we're extremely uh, good at buying advertising. We're really good at advertising and marketing. Um, you know, we're seen by 30 to 40 million people a week. Uh, we have just over a billion video views on our own videos. Um, we've paid for most of that. And like I said, you pay for something to get in front of people. If it's good, it's going to kind of stick and take, take a life of its own. But for us, it was around figuring out how to advertise uh, efficiently figuring out how to create products that were differentiated in the marketplace and being consistent with our branding in terms of saying no to pretty much everything. So brand is defined by what you say no to, not by what you say yes to. So if there's a trend going around and you feel like you want to jump on that trend, you know, for us, we don't jump on trends. We're thinking about, we can, we're thinking about how can we set a trend or how can we jump on something that's going to be around 20 years from now. But for us, I think as a brand, we think of, what's gonna be around for 20 years from now? And what is something that we can sit, uh, for example, if, 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 you, if I told you there's a really good deal also on some beachfront land, but it's next to a place that has constant tsunamis and you don't know if that land is gonna fall apart, you know, you're, you're, you're better off building your empire uh, away from the beach, you know, 15 minutes inland, than you are building it right on an island that's probably not gonna be there three months from now. It just depends on, do you want to build sand castles or do you want to build real castles? Sand castles are fun. You can play with them, but the, a wave can come and wipe them away. Um, I'm just at a point in my life where that's not longer exciting for me. I, I would rather build something smaller or less exciting. That's not going to be wiped away um, because I, I'm tired of losing time uh, in, in those have investments. So long winded answer to say, create a great product, product you can stand by, support your product. We don't look at a customer as an order number or return on ad spend or a click. We look at them as John Doe or whatever in Indiana. Who is that person? Let's pick up the phone and call them. Uh, we have a phone number on our website. We have live chat on our website. We've brought a human, uh, a human aspect to our brand that allows us to stand out against our, com our competition because you can't follow the founder of Crest or Colgate on Instagram. Aside from really like making it more of, of a humanized experience, what, what would you say are, are one of the things that you guys like also wanted to pioneer to, to change up the customer experience or overcome objectives and, you know, let them face the switching costs of saying, I've been using Colgate for the past 10 years. I'm going to jump and, and try snow. Yeah. I mean, the other thing too is, is if, if everybody was happy with what they were, you know, using, um, they wouldn't want to switch. So, so you have to make sure that what you've created is a, a magnitude better than what's out there. And you have to be very clear in why that product is better and be able to stand by it. Um, so if something is that much better, people might be willing to change. It's like, well, I, I really, you know, I really like the view I have, you know, in my room right now, I kind of don't want to change. But then if you show them a vision of what their view could be, um, you know, then I might be willing to give it a shot and go try it out. Especially if you say, look, come stay in my condo. I've got better views than you have, but I want you to try it first. Try it for a week. 
If you like it, I'll sell you the condo and you can move on over. I'll even help you move. Um, if you don't like it, go back to your condo. You lost nothing. You're good to go. That's the the uh, connection there is give it a 30 days money back guarantee. If you don't like the product, you don't see results fine. We give a five year warranty. Um, so, you know, five years from now, if you come into an issue, we're going to replace it for you free of charge. So we really reduce the barrier to try to show people that we have something better as opposed to downplaying what they're currently doing and saying, there's a difference if you came into my room right now and said, oh my gosh, your view sucks. Wow, you live in this? Versus saying like, dude, your view is pretty dope. Like, that's awesome. You're going to really love the view that I've got. Come check it out. You know, no strings attached. If you want to leave as soon as you walk in, you hate the view, fine. There's a difference in the way that you sell and you propose to in front of a customer. Um, and then ultimately, the way we humanize our brand is we pick up the phone and talk to them. So um, in the early days, and even still now, I'll pick up the phone and call our customers and uh, one by one. And, you know, in the early days, I remember because I was still printing labels. I knew every name when I would see them ask a question or leave a comment on a Facebook ad. I remembered packing that person's order. So I like I knew that was a person. I knew exactly if I forgot something in the order. And then we do things like handwritten notes. All of our packaging is customized. We've never outsourced fulfillment. All of our fulfillment since day one. Tens of millions of dollars of orders has have been shipped from Phoenix, Arizona. We never outsourced that. We want to touch our product. We want to make sure it's, you know, white glove service directly to the customer. We've never outsourced customer support. So I want to make sure that, you know, people who are with us are with us for a long time taking care of our customers. We've also never laid anybody off. So um, th there's a compounding effect when you build a team that's going to be with you for a long period of time. They learn things over time. They teach you things over time. We really built a culture of serving the best products to our customers in the best way possible and not being afraid to pick up the phone and talk to them, get on a live chat and talk to them, um, get them involved in our community, then posting about our products, um, sending them free products. There's a lot we do to make sure that people know we're a real business, we're real people. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona. You can call us. We'll talk to you. We'll FaceTime you, talk about your product. And I think um, I learned a lot of that stuff from, from Zappos um, shoe company about how to have fanatical uh, customers. When you look at Zappos, which sold for a billion dollars to Amazon, what were they doing that was that, that different? They're selling products that you can get anywhere else. You can go to the store and buy the same pair of shoes. But what they were doing is they were saying, okay, we're going to give you a good deal on the shoes that you want to buy, but we are going to go above and beyond on the service. And that's why companies like Nordstrom, Zappos, the list goes on and on. People who serve their customers, um, you know, wholeheartedly will earn that repeat business. And I got to tell you, if you're, if you're in the order business, you will never beat someone like me who's in the reorder business because my customers keep coming back and it builds loyalty over time. And um, if you're in the order business and you're just worried about making as much money as you can one time from a customer and they're just a number on the screen, someone's going to come and take the money from you because customers are loyal to who treats them well. And we try to treat every single customer as if they were our own mother, a family member. And we try to, we try to do the best that we can to make sure that we're taking care of them. Even if that meant me as a one person shop, I'm picking up the phone and talking to every customer. What made you buy? What did you like most about it? Have you used it yet? Nobody wants to do that. Everyone's so afraid. They just want to focus on how many clicks, what's the profitability, how cheap can I get the inventory? Um, you know, that's it. You know, like I don't want to give them a refund because I already got their money and I spent it. You've got to go the other way. You got to pick up the phone for every customer. And listen, if you can't pick up the phone and talk to your customers, you might be selling something that you're not really proud of or doing something that you're not really proud of. So it's going to be very hard to compete at scale. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's huge. So, guys, if you took away massive value from from Josh and like, let's say you had one key takeaway from you know just these brand building aspects, drop a five in the chat box real quick so uh, we can make sure that you guys are, are following and all is well over there. All right, yeah, chat box is blowing up. So just just to recap that first and foremost, one of the things if you guys end up missing it or um, overlooking it. One of the first things that he focused on was a risk reversal. So making sure that if people weren't happy that they had the ability to get their money back, which is huge. And one of the biggest objections that comes whenever you're trying to sell anything online that people can't have in their hands or they're not already fanatically ready to purchase. Um, and then also building out like a business 
with, you know, real values that you're treating like a real business guys. If you're trying to get rich quick or you're just trying to make a quick buck, it's not necessarily going to pay dividends in the long haul. And as you can see what Josh has been able to build, which is now, you know, a nine figure empire in, in oral care has happened from his hard work compounding over, you know, year after year. So don't be afraid to get aggressive. Don't be afraid to get in the trenches. No one is never too good to ship out a sample or, or package your own products. I mean, I just did the same thing literally an hour before this webinar and, and overnighting a sample. So guys, make sure that you are you know, ready to take things seriously and don't mind getting into your business. Stop trying to outsource everything when it's too early. And, and segueing off of that, Josh, what would you say is like one of the – best pieces of advice that you could recommend for people that are currently bootstrapping your business. Now you, you did what Warren Buffett would do is build your business as if you had a moat around it. Um, not everyone has, you know, the right capital to go ahead and, and start a business where they could invest a ton into, into product development and research. And then also uh, building out a really high quality team. What would you say are like a few pointers that people could do when they're bootstrapping their yeah, business? So um, you've got to be willing to, to do things that don't scale early on. Um, and you want to keep some of those things that don't scale as you scale your business. Some of the things that don't scale are the CEO calling customers. That's not very scalable. You know, someone would look at it and say, Josh, what are you doing? You're spending three hours a day talking to two customers who paid you a hundred bucks. What, what are you doing? Um, but there's a, there's, there's a huge benefit. In fact, I should be paying the customers for talking to them because I'm learning from the horse's mouth, so to speak about, um, you know, what made you buy? What do you like? You know, were you looking at alternatives? What would you like better? I'm learning directly. I don't need to go hire a market research firm to go and think about things. I don't even need to do market research myself. If, if you've got an iPhone or Android or a rotary phone, you know, you can pick up the phone and call the one customer you have. Even if it's one customer, you can call them once a day and say, how's it going? How do you annoy them? Yeah, you know, literally there's no excuse about early on, especially if you're bootstrapping, you're, that means that your time, your time's valuable, but your time's not as valuable as someone running a hundred million dollar business. So you've got, you know, if I can't, I don't have an excuse, you know, so people bootstrapping and starting out. Um, and now keep in mind, I, I was, you know, a multimillionaire when I started Snow, but I started Snow with the same principle I started my first business with a hundred bucks with was how can I build something from the ground up Focus on profit and reinvest that profit, reinvest the profit, turn 100 to 200, 200 to 400, 400 to 500, uh, just boom, boom, boom. So everything that initially when you're bootstrapping a business or a brand or whatever you're doing, you've got to do things that nobody else is willing to do. Put it, put your cell phone number on the website, um, you know, text your customers directly. Um, you're going to hear me talk about this over and over because it's so important when you're early on to understand what's going on with the product. and. Um, you know, if you happen to be drop shipping right now, um, you know, I, I, I understand the mechanics of drop shipping, the sense that it allows you to learn how to run media and it, it's low barrier to entry. So I'm nothing wrong with drop shipping, right? Like I, I had my own version of drop shipping by building a successful agency when I was, you know, a teenager. Like I, I got to learn, uh, in a low barrier to entry business, like running an agency, being a consultant, things like that. So there's nothing wrong with that, but, um, if, you know, you're, even if you're drop shipping, calling those customers and saying, what did you like about the product? What didn't you like about the product? Because who knows, that may help you create the product you're going to sell for the rest of your life. And it, it may have started as a drop shipping business for you, but um, you may be able to turn that into a real brand. So I think early on when you're bootstrapping, you want to focus on profit. You want to focus on doing things that don't scale. Um, you want to focus on, even if it's just you and you yourself and I, you know, just focus on doing a few things that make a difference. Like it's, it's not the one tactic that's going to change your business. It's the strategies of business that have been in play for thousands of years. How can, how fast can you get the product to the customer? How can you make sure that they're happy with that uh, product? How can you get them to buy again? How can you sell more of what they want to buy from you? Those are strategies that have been around forever versus like what's one spy tool that's going to help me find something that I didn't know before. Um, you know, that's that, those, that kind of tactic seek, seeking, um, leads to a little bit like a gambling mindset and the gambling mindset can be dangerous because you're looking for your next win. Um, you know, for me, I'm thinking about how can I, how can I create my own game, right? It's like, 
uh, one of my, my tenant principles is never play another man's game. And so we try to think through um, if we didn't have to compete with anybody, what would that look like? And you could do things that even if you don't, you know, have the money to create a product from the ground up, how can you do things that are different? Um, can you allow people to order through text messaging? Can you pick up the phone when they call you? Can you write handwritten notes in your packages? Can you put a stamp on your package that's unique? Can you put number 45 out of 500 and put a thing on your website that says, you know, if your number, if your number on your package ends in a five, you've won a $25 gift card. I mean, you do just crazy stuff. I'm literally just making stuff up, but this stuff works. Like this is, this is what makes a customer feel special when they're buying from you um, versus just a one and done customer. And that's why there's a way to do drop shipping and there's a way to do drop shipping right. And then there's a way to build a brand and then build a business. And so you have to kind of think through what matches where you're at. If you have zero dollars in your bank account right now, what can you do to put money in your bank account? Can you learn something that's valuable to other people that you, you can charge them for a service? If you're going to do that, though, make sure you're over delivering. I see way too many um, people out there selling services and they're not delivering on their services. I, I've been a part of that in the sense of I've been screwed over by a lot of people who say they can do this, they can do that, they can do this, they can do that. Um, you want to make sure that you, you know your brand is going to stick with you forever. So if you're in the services business, you got to remember that you already have your brand. It's you and your name. And uh, people don't forget that. And people talk about this thing. So if, for me, I started off with zero dollars making websites for other people for $500 a pop. And I made them the, the best websites I could make them, gave them infinite edits, gave them free web hosting. I didn't know one thing about the internet or web development or anything like that. I literally went to Google, YouTube, and the library, learned how to make websites from the ground up and said, how can I give you more value than a $5,000 website for 500 bucks and have it delivered tomorrow and give you free edits for a year on anything that you need? That's the stuff that doesn't scale but that's the stuff that helps build the foundation of a great business. That's massive guys drop, drop a two in the, in the chat box. If um, you had a good takeaway from Josh's brand building strategies here. Awesome, man. We got over 400 people here tuning in right now. This is amazing. Um, really killer points. We're going to transition over to Scott in a couple of minutes. Uh, so Josh, if you want to field a few questions uh, in Q and a from the audience, Guys, feel free to drop those in uh, in the chat box if you have access to that there. You see it, Josh? Yeah, I see a bunch of stuff going on here. Um, I'm just a new product. Okay, so any tips for a clever company name and slogan? Um, yeah, I mean, you want something that <clears throat> something that is going to make sense for the future of your brand, product, or service. So if I had a, an agency and I called it face facebook marketing 101.com if i if facebook marketing ends up not being something i want to do anymore you're gonna you're pigeonholed as a facebook marketer um if i created a, a business called bluewaterbottles.com and if my brand name was blue water bottles if i wanted to sell anything else i'm probably pigeonholed so um you know like this brand here is called just right so their their whole thing is uh the, the back says just goods incorporated so it wasn't just water bottles just nothing just water so now when they come out with just juice i might buy it from them they come out with just skincare i might buy it from them um so thinking through uh i think that we you know bill gates said this he goes we overestimate what we can do in one year and underestimate what we can do in 10 years and so it's like one year i want to make a million dollars i want to have a lamborghini it's like that's like a lot of young people i talk to is like how can i get rich tomorrow how can i what's the one trick or one tip you know, Josh, that will make me loaded tomorrow. The only trick I know is I've been doing this for 14 years. Um, and you just, you had, you learn along the way. But I think in terms of this company name and slogan, slogan's got to be something that has people feeling something, right? It's, uh, I don't know if these guys, these guys say, or, uh, you, you just did a good thing, just water. And so they're kind of leading with that just, you just did a good thing. So I'm assuming that when they come out with skincare or they come out with other products, it's probably going to make me feel like I also did a good thing. So think through how, you know, imagine if you had to run this business for 50 years, 50 years from now, are you going to be excited by the name that you've created and the song you've created? Now, at the same time, don't spend 18 years figuring out a name just because it's not that important. You can come out with, 
you know, Hagen Dazs ice cream. That's not even a word. Like they made up that word to make it sound exotic so they could charge more than everybody else for their ice cream. So make something up. If you're stuck, just be like, all right, just start blurting out random stuff. Hoba Luba. Hoba Luba. Love it. It's a great name. How do you spell that? And then you can go out and create it. But, you know, ideally look around you and think about what is it that I'm going to be doing? You know, this, this brand, these are my favorite eye drops. This is called Roto. I don't know what that means. No idea about it. So, you know, and I buy them, they're like $8 a thing instead of $1. I don't know why, but I buy them. The product's awesome. So ultimately the product will speak for itself. It's not the, the, the name or the slogan that's going to sell the business. Um, you know, Tom's shoes, like, I don't know what that exactly means. So, you know, I wouldn't put so much emphasis on it, but at least think about, is this something that I can put on a hat and I'm going to wear, you know, to somebody's wedding, you know, like, can I put on my shirt and go and take photos with it? You know, think about that a little bit, give yourself 48 hours to think about it. At the end of 48 hours, you start blurbing out words and just go with it because it's, it's better to, your, your, your clarity is going to come from progress. It's better to change your name once you figure things out than it is to never get started. So that's one question. Yeah, man, that's, that's huge. And then also guys, um, for a good solution, if you wanted to get started with stuff such as postcards, this is stuff that I've incorporated in my business in the past. Uh, it's called thanks.io. So you could upload your mailing list, your shipping addresses of all your customers, and you could leverage that if you sign up for like an enterprise level plan, it's, you know, you're paying pennies or I think it's like a quarter per postcard. But if you're trying to find a way to generate UGC, or if you are trying to re-engage your customers, give them a, you know, a coupon code to go ahead and become a repeat customer. That's a great strategy to go ahead and implement. It's really cost friendly and then also develops a greater connection with your customers as well. Um, let's see here. That's a funny one. More morning routine. My morning routine is I'm not a morning person. I never have been. I gave up trying to be more. I've read every single book, miracle morning and all this stuff that made me feel like shit because I'm not a morning person. Um, I'm a night owl. That's just who I am. I've been that way for since I, as long as I can remember, I'm a procrastinator. So I do my best work an hour before it's due. Um, very stressful. Don't recommend it. But, uh, I've kind of gotten a point where I'm not a morning person. I'm a procrastinator. Uh, you know, so for me, it's generally, um, dragging myself out of bed and usually grabbing some water cause I'm dehydrated and, um, you know, firing up my espresso machine or walking downstairs to, to the coffee shop. Um, and then I try to schedule calls within like an hour of waking up because once I get on a call, just for me, it fires me up. It just gets me going. Um, even if, you know, I'm going for a walk or whatever it might be, it just gets my mind going up. Like it, it throws me on the field right away. So I try to schedule some crazy calls. First thing in the morning, it could be, um, you know, a very important call. And sometimes I drag myself out of bed and within five minutes I'm on that call and I'm just, I'm snapping into it. Nobody would know that I just woke up five minutes ago. So I'm not a morning person. I don't, I, I believe in you finding your own, you know, uh, routine that works. Maybe when I get older, I'll be a morning person. I don't know, but you figure out what, what times of the day do you find yourself most motivated and optimize around those. Don't try to go uh, run errands and go grocery shopping or hang out with friends when you should be sitting down and working because that's when your mind is just, it's just flowing. And so for me, my creative mind flows at night. It's when people aren't blowing up my phone. I'm not on calls. It's quiet. It's dark. Nobody's bothering me. That's when I get a lot of my best work done from a creative standpoint during the day. It's just putting out fires left and right, like boom, 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 boom. Um, so that's kind of, that talks about the, someone asked morning or two. I always, thought, I always think that question's funny because I'm not a morning person. Uh, Let's see here. It's here work. Uh, coffee makes you more dehydrated, absolutely. But you know what? You know what gives me a headache is if when you're addicted to caffeine like I am, you don't get your coffee, you get a bad headache. So, dude, I'm trying to peel off right now. I'm like a week free of coffee, trying to deal with my withdrawal. It's a crazy drug, <laughs> but look, I, there's something's got to give, right? I, I I run some some very large companies, and I do a lot during the day, a lot during the week. Something's got to give. I could either be ripping lines of cocaine to keep me going or I can have a cup of coffee and be a little dehydrated. You gotta, you gotta pick your poison. I think, I think coffee and you know, whatever else I, you know, some chocolate is, you know, I gotta live a little bit. Um, here's, here's, so wait, I'm just scrolling through the questions here. Uh, 
Yeah, f feel free to pick one more, and then we're going to switch over to Scott, and then feel free to shamelessly plug whatever you got going on, let people know what's up so that they could stay up to date with how you're changing the game on a daily yep. basis. Um, let's see here. So how do you be focused, um, and how do you go through it alone? Kind of, kind of very similar questions. Um, when you're a sole founder, you know, it's the, the, the problems you're dealing with, you can have a team, but there are a lot of things that you're going to deal with. Um, on your own, right? Like you're living in the future because you're thinking about where this company could go. You're thinking about the right now, putting out fires. You're thinking about a week from now. There's a lot of stuff going on. For me, I I just accepted that everything takes about 10 times longer than I want it to. So it's, it's, it doesn't mean that I do things slowly. I do things very quickly. I'm fast moving. I graduated college in two years. Like it, I'm just going, I'm always going. But I've accepted now that things will take a little bit longer. Things get harder, but you get better. And so the focus for me is if you focus on one thing, you'll realize that there's so much to be done. If you look at one of my brands like Snow, we've got Pinterest ads, Facebook ads, Snapchat ads, TikTok ads, retail distribution, international distribution, legal, trademarks, IP. I've got 4 billion things a day that that's just one of my brands. So in reality, if someone's doing more than two or three things at once, that means that none of them are making enough money. So uh, it's very important that, yeah, and I learned that. That's me. I had to tell myself that because I used to get all pumped up when we'd be like, yo, what you working on? I'd be like, oh, I got an agency. I got this product. I do this. I do that. I do this. I do that. Um, in reality, that means that none of them are that popping off that much because if something's popping off, you've got one thing and that's all you can do. Um, so for me, it was really nice to realize that I will never be, um, I will never be caught up on one business because there's just so much to do. And uh, last thing I would say is just follow the money. You know, if somebody's not making your money, skip it. You know, just follow the money. Even if it's somebody you're not passionate about, follow the money. And that's not saying it's all about the money. When I say follow the money, it's follow the traction, follow where the momentum is going. If you see the snowballs rolling, right? Follow that, jump on board of that and kind of let everything else go. I think people, there's a sunk cost to uh, people getting involved in a lot of things and they feel like they can't get rid of them. Um, in order for you to focus, you got to get rid of everything else and you got to learn how to say no to everybody. Someone wants to have coffee with you. Nope. Someone wants to talk to you. Nope. Someone wants to get on the phone with you. Nope. Text me. Someone wants to text you. Nope. Email me. So like if someone wants to email you, send me a letter in the mail, like say no to everything as much as you can and you will be successful. Saying yes to everything, uh, that's just my take on it. It's contrarian, I don't know. But for me, I try to say no to 99% of things that get in front of my in front of my uh, uh, eyes. If it's a new product, no. If it's a new opportunity, no. If it's new this, no. And the more I say no, the more money I make. Well, yeah, man, doubling down on what's working and um, clearly Snow is not dealing with any issues right now, so. Keep killing it, bro. Thank you so much for coming on. Guys, drop a quick five in the chat box if you learned something new from Josh, whether it was mindset, business development, building a brand. We're creeping around 500 people on here live, which is absolutely awesome. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Josh, you crushed it, bro. Yeah, Thank you, you so guys. much. Bye.